you, ladies and gentlemen. Recently, recently at Paramount, I completed a picture called Bo James. It's the life story of New York's fabulous ex-mayor, James J. Walker. Of course, the man who knew the most about Jimmy Walker was his close friend, the Toastmaster of the United States, Mr. Georgie Jessup. Georgie is the most popular after-dinner speaker in the world. In fact, Georgie wasn't born. His mother found him on a menu. <laughs> Last week in a bus, a passenger burped, and Georgie got up and spoke for 20 minutes. <laughs> You know, before we started shooting on Bo James, I wanted to find out as much as I could about Jimmy Walker, so I went to visit Georgie out at his home in Santa Monica. Bob, you well, look fine. I, I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, not at all. I was reading this old Greek book, The Debates Between Socrates and Martha Ray. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, put your money on Martha. She'll beat him with one lip tied behind her back. <laughs> Let me get your coat and hat, and I'll have the butler put it away. Right. James! James! <laughs> Wait a minute. That's James? It must be. I fired Sam last month. <laughs> That's the butler. I gotta have another talk with Dad. <laughs> you know, this is really a pitiful case. Uh, she's an orphan. An orphan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, lost both a mother and a father in a crap game in Las Vegas. <laughs> it's hard to believe that he's Eddie Cantor's father. <laughs> By the way, Bob, is this a social visit, or did you want to use my house as a shortcut to some golf course? <laughs> no, no, Georgie. You see, I really... Dinner is served. Oh, thanks, Harry. <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Look, Georgie, I don't want to interfere with your dinner, you know. I'll be back. I can come back later. Oh, no, 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 no. I always eat alone. Why don't you come in and have a little snack with me? Come on. You're all right. Hey, but Georgie, this is a banquet table. You know something? Your, your hair may be falling, but your eyes are good. You're right. <laughs> yeah, but you mean you eat at a table like this all the time? Doesn't everybody? <laughs> Only Sophie Tucker. For her, this is a snack table. <laughs> Come right up here. I think I can crowd you in here. I think I'd better humor him. I think he's flipped his monocle. <laughs> here, sit right down here, Bob. Oh, fine. Of course, later on, I'll ask you to say a few words. Oh, of course. We always keep the best speech for the end. Naturally. So I'll follow you. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk too loud. I'm a light sleeper. <laughs> I don't want to keep this crowd waiting. Good evening, my friends, and ladies and gentlemen. This is indeed an evening to be remembered and a memory to conjure with. And me, a humble minstrel, I am overwhelmed with this vast turnout. <laughs> and may I compliment you, ladies and gentlemen, all of you who are gathered here for your great generosity in donating to this $50 a plate benefit dinner. By the way, your check is late. My check? All right, I'll take the cash. Yeah, but Georgie, I... Shh! People are staring. This is a benefit. A benefit? For who? For the butler. She hasn't been paid in months. <laughs> but wait a minute, you Saratan baby doll. Just a second. Ladies and gentlemen, now that we have broken bread and have tasted of the fruits of the vineyard, it is time for a serious note. At this time, I'd like to pay tribute to a great comedian and a great humanitarian, Bob Hope. We shall miss him. <laughs> Georgie, hold it. I'm not dead yet. For one little detail, you're going to ruin a great speech? Look, I don't mind playing straight, but not that straight. All right, all right, all right. Tell you what we'll do. In fact, this is ridiculous. I didn't come here to eat. I want to talk to you. We won't eat anyhow. The food is very bad here. Come into the living room. <laughs> Follow me in here. You can say anything you like. Come right in here, Bob. Look, George. Paramount is going to make the life story of Jimmy Walker, the ex-mayor of New York. Yes. And since you are one of his closest friends, naturally... Naturally, I know just what you want. You want me to play the part. I can pack in three minutes. Now, wait a minute, George. No. No, yes. look. I'm going to play the part. You mean they chose you to play the part instead of me? That's right. Oh, that's wonderful, baby. <laughs> that's just fine. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> 
be reasonable. You were his best friend. You have to play you. you mean, well, you think I'm right for the part? Well, who else is there? Who could Gregory Peck play it? Well, he's good looking, but he can't act. Rock Hudson? Well, he can act, but he's not good looking. <laughs> Rex Harrison? Well, with that Italian accent, I don't think so. <laughs> well, you see, you've got to help us. All right, I will. And you want to know something? I'll be happy because Jimmy was a rare man. You know, here's a late picture of him. And to be serious, Bob, I think that not since Tom Paine, as any man in American public life, had his faults so exaggerated and his virtues as mimonized as James J. Jimmy Walker. I knew him very well, Bob, and I loved him very much. He's a wonderful man. Say, what about these other pictures here? George M. Cohen, isn't that great? Isn't that great? Irving Berlin? Irving Berlin. Look at here, Sam Bernard. He was one of the greatest comedians you ever saw. Sam Bernard. Was he as great as Jack Benny? Who? Jack Benny. The new fellas, I don't know. <laughs> here, here's a picture of Al Jolson. Al Jolson, how about that? Uh, you want to know something? I was at the Winter Garden the opening night of a show, and he sang this song. Want to hear it? I'd love it, Georgie. Good. <laughs> Yesterday I heard a fella sigh. Oh my, oh me, oh my. Seven times he got aboard a train. And seven times he jumped right off to kiss his little gal and tell her to 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 say goodbye. Oh my. A choo choo train that takes me away from you. Oh, you don't know how sad it makes me. Kiss me, Judy, and then do it over again. Oh, wait for the mail. I'll never fail if you don't get a letter, then you know I'm in jail. Ah ha ha! Tut tut tut! See, don't cry. Tut tut tut! See, goodbye. intrigues me, that picture right there. That's old Eddie Foy. You're telling me. You should have seen him do his famous sand dance, Bob. Well, you know, I did the picture of Eddie Foy, and I rehearsed the sand dance for six months before they cut it out of the picture. Oh, for heaven's sake. That's the experience I had. Georgie, Eddie used to come out with a handful of sand, and he'd sprinkle it on the stage like this. <laughs> Picture a couple of young fellas that were very, very popular in the late 20s. Do you remember who they were? Do I remember them? That's Van and Skink. They used to be billed as the pennant winning battery of song. Life. That's right, and they finished their act with a song called Carolina in the Morning, and I can remember they used to kill them. Yeah? Well, stand by because here comes Murder Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. No one could be sweeter than my sweetie when I meet her in the morning. Where the morning glories twine around the door. Whisper 
whispering pretty stories I long to hear once more Strolling with my girly when the dew is early, early in the morning Butterflies all flutter up and kiss each little buttercup at dawning And if I had Aladdin's lamp for only a day I'd make a wish and here's what I'd say Nothing, Nothing could, could be finer than, than to be in Carolina in the morning He's not going to take a ball in my house <laughs> I was with the Brinks mob <laughs> 